ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all. This is for the ribbon cutting of an interpretive sign by the Middlesex Canal Future Home Museum. We find ourselves on the newly built observation deck of a former woolen cloth warehouse of the Talbot Mills. Before there was this building, there was a canal duck. Its water and the hydropower came from the Concord River and the Concord River was the highest point between Boston and Lowell, which the canal 27 miles did. Uh, especially because of a strategically placed dam, it became the summit pond, supplying the canal system with water and hydro-powered locks. Before 1710, this was free-flowing river for thousands of years, annually supplying the local population with an abundance of migratory fish and fertile meadows. Henry David Thoreau, he was also spending time on this river, actually much more than on Walden Pond, and he, find, he was definitely here and wrote about the dam in his week on the Concord and Merrimack River. This spot holds so much history. So I do want to acknowledge everybody here. We have select men, I know select women on Zoom. There are historical boards, uh, CPA, community preservation members, uh, conservation commissioners, friends of the Middlesex Canal, and I thank you all for attending. And I'm especially honored and humbled to welcome today's VIPs, the state legislators rep representing Billerica. And I'd like to introduce the lady first. In 2017, she won the special election to succeed late Senator Ken Donnelly as the fourth Middlesex state senator. She also won re-election in 2020. It's good to have her represent us on Beacon Hill, and it's great to have her here with us today, friends of the Middlesex Canal. This is Cindy Friedman. I'm going to just turn around so it doesn't look too strange with my back to all of you. Thank you, Marlies, and thanks to all of you. It's great to be here, and I want to also give a shout out to the um, MCA. And uh, I just, you know, have to say that it was incredibly wonderful of you to put the heron right out in the middle of the pond for all of us to see in case we were wondering why this is so important and why all of this work and this historical work matters so much to us and to future generations. And I have to say, they don't make buildings like they used to. This is a beautiful, beautiful spot. The deck looks wonderful thanks to all the people that help put this together with the CPA funds. I also want to um, shout out to Sudbury, Assabet, Concord, Wild, and Scenic River Stewardship Council and the Wampanoag Tribe of Akina. And so I want to thank you all. Thanks for having me. This is a beautiful, beautiful spot. And I really, I encourage people to come out and see it and can't wait till it's open to the public. So thanks so much for having me. Thank you, Senator. Next, we're on to another legislator, the fifth consecutive two-year term state representative for Billerica. He has a slogan. His slogan is, first for Billerica. Now, uh, just like the 27-mile canal, which also started first in Billerica. It, with a with a ceremonial shovel and everything, special hats. This is 1794, I think we're talking, 1790s. And uh, on behalf of Middlesex Canal, I welcome State Representative Mark Lombardo. Thank you. you know, I was gonna use that line about first with Ulrika, that was, yeah. <laughs> now that's done. So uh, yeah, I'm so uh, happy to be here this morning and beautiful, beautiful morning. This deck is absolutely gorgeous, being able to see uh, this come to life and the future plans that we have uh, for uh, restoring our, our history. 
and making sure that our future generations know all about what we've done. This, this work is amazing. Thank you to everyone for all the hard work and, and it's just an honor to be able to be here this morning. So Elise and everyone, thank you very much. And I welcome you to come to this package here. You could even pull the strings. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to pull for the And then some more. Take this. Beautiful. Oh, clap, clap, clap. Oh. Thank you. So, for a little bit of explanation, you'll see the floating towpaths. The canal went north to Lowell and south to Boston. You can see the little peninsula and to the left of the peninsula uh, would be this. And the canal went right in here towards Boston or right beside us towards Lowell. And the whole background painting was done by Thomas Dale. Thomas Dale is one of the directors of the Middlesex Canal Association. And he has a great sense of humor. He not only, yeah, well, first of all, I sent him a picture of standing in that doorway. And then he immediately traveled with his fantasy to the top of the cupola of the Talbot Mills and made it more of a bird's eye view. And he also put uh, Henry David and his uh, brother John in their dory on the river. So he has a sense of humor. Um, there's also a scroll map, which you can still see in the Concord Free Public Library. If it was real size, it would probably roll out to uh, Selectman Delorier, uh, but this is a little bit smaller, but big enough to see that Henry David Thoreau wrote floating topaz. In the middle, in the center, you see the emblem of the Sudbury, Asbet and Concord Wild and Scenic River Stewardship Council. They, um, they've provided a grant of almost $12,000 towards the building of this deck and this uh, interpretive sign. And um, the timeline is uh, based on work by Laura Wildman, who did a, in, an extensive study into the Talbot Dam, putting not only where the dam was constructed, but also, and, and, and this is a matter of a few hundred years, but also the thousands of years, so this is not to scale. Again, if this were to scale, we would fall off the deck. Uh, 9,000 before the common era, and these are life-sized artifacts that prove the presence of indigenous nations millions, or millions, thousands of years ago. I'm not going beyond the, uh, the icebergs and the glaciers. So what I would now like to do, and I hope she is present on Zoom, the research for this panel began intuitively in the earliest beginnings of human civilization, the indigenous nations. History professor Christoph Strobel of UMass Lowell, he put me on track. He said, I should consult with the indigenous peoples themselves and not use artist renditions because those renderings just perpetuate stereotypes. The Stewardship Council funded that consultation with an expert author and historian from the Wampanoag Aquina tribe. And she connected me with the Wampanoag language reclamation project specialists. She warned me of pitfalls in writing the narrative for the interpretive panel. And she reviewed and rewrote my draft. Uh, I, I could read Muscatequid, meaning marshy meadows in Algonquin. It has this area, river, land, everything, has been inhabited for over 10,000 years. To indigenous peoples, it provided a home base, a travel waterway, a rich source of fish, game and bountiful meadows. And this bounty drew the English settlers to establish 
Shashin plantation, like colony, which was incorporated later as a town of Dorica. The indigenous peoples experienced 90% mortality rate as a result of disease and colonization, but archeological findings remain the silent witnesses of indigenous presence while surviving generations continue to live along this waterway, which the Puritan settlers renamed the Conquer River. So I hope that Linda Coombs is on Zoom. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Linda Coombs, uh, Maquina Wampanoag tribe. Um, I too have a, a, a small investment in Bill Ricca in that many years ago, I went to school in Lowell, uh, right next door, but in those days it was known as Lowell State College. So that was uh, more than a couple of minutes ago. Um, I'm very grateful to have been asked to, to work on this project and to help with the uh, interpretation on this uh, panel. Um, words are, are very important. Um, but I, I see this as only the first step um, in addressing this history. Um, when, I, when I was writing, I tried to get as, as, as much history as I could into a small space, um, as you might be able to tell. Um, but it's just the beginning. This is just the first step. It's not an end all and be all. And I would like everyone to keep that in mind. The, the area here um, in, on the East Coast with indigenous people um, is very deep and complex. And um, it still bears a lot of uh, study and, and research and speaking with indigenous people that are still here. And um, I'm always available, usually. Um, so please feel free to, free to reach out with any questions that you might have or any other way that I might be able to help. And I thank you for listening to my words this morning. Thank you. Well, thank you, Linda. While I was introducing you, I mentioned the River Stewardship Council. The council was established to coordinate the conservation of the 29 mile river segment of the Sudbury, Assabet and Concord rivers with a wild and scenic, a federal wild and scenic designation. The number one criterion for that designation is a free flowing river. But before I take words out of her mouth, I introduce to you staff member of the River Stewardship Council, National Park Service, Natural Resources Specialist, Emma Lord, and that will be a recording. <laughs> take it away, Jamie. <laughs> In 1968, Congress passed the Wild and Scenic Rivers Act to protect designated rivers and their unique characteristics in their free flowing condition for the enjoyment of present and future generations. In 1999, Congress designated 29 miles of the Sudbury, Assabet, and Concord rivers as a component of the National Wild and Scenic River System. This designation recognizes the river's nationally significant, outstanding scenic, ecological, recreational, historical, and literary values. The Suasco River Stewardship Council was created to coordinate the protection and enhancement of these resources. The municipalities of Framingham, Wayland, Sudbury, Lincoln, Concord, Carlisle, Bedford, and Billerica each have a representative on the River Stewardship Council, as well as Sudbury Valley Trustees, ORS, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and the National Park Service. Each year, the River Stewardship Council implements a community grants program that supports municipalities, municipal groups, and local organizations in doing projects that protect the river's resources and build strong local stewardship of the rivers. The Middlesex Canal Association received community grant funding to improve community connection to and understanding of the Concord River's history through the construction of this observation deck and interpretive panel. While it's not located on the wild and scenic designated segment of the Concord River, this project highlights the historic value of the river system as a whole. The observation deck affords visitors a scenic view of the Concord River, while the interpretive panel informs visitors about the rich and diverse human history of the area. The Suasco River Stewardship Council supports the long-term community engagement and education regarding the history of the Concord River. The River Stewardship Council will continue to innovate with partners like the Middlesex Canal Association to develop interpretive opportunities and public engagement activities related to the rich archeological, 
literary, and cultural history along the rivers. On behalf of the Suasco Wild and Scenic River Stewardship Council, I congratulate you on the completion of this great project. Thank you. Well, uh, great success. Thank you, Emma. And now, last but not least, and he, he is here in person, but um, because he also wanted to be at the museum, he was good enough to make a recorded brief presentation of this building restoration project from a, the unique perspective of the early industrialists of the young United States. When we had Renaissance men of old who were farmer, engineer, and sheriff all in one person at the same time, the days of building Boston, getting the granite and the lumber from the north going south to build Quincy Market and what have you, the wool and cotton went north, pumping up Lowell. So uh, enjoy this recording of the president of the Middlesex Canal Association himself, Jay Jeremiah Breen. I am Jay Breen, president of the Middlesex Canal Association. In this video, I would like to share why the association accepted the gift of 2 Old Elm Street from Pace Industries. In 2014, when Pace made the gift of 2 Old Elm Street, the building was quite dilapidated. The fire department had already posted a scarlet X on it, warning firefighters to keep out. But 2 Old Elm Street had location right here on the banks of the Summit Pond. It was at the center of a mile of canal to the south, which could be walked, and a mile of canal to the north, which could be walked to Chelmsford. It was on the side of, of the canal. And here in 1794, John Hancock's compatriots had a ceremonial groundbreaking as they began the 10 years of digging the, the 27 mile long canal. Here is a remnant of one of the 20, 20 locks on the canal, again, right next to the uh, visitor center. The state's Middlesex Canal Commission has plans for a park on both sides of the summit pond. On the, on the lower side, it has a uh, six, 60 parking spaces proposed, a boat ramp with parking for, for boat trailers. On the east side, again, it has parking spaces as an improved path going out on the causeway to the uh, a, a bit of restored floating towpath. This aerial view shows the floating towpath. Here's to Old Elm Street with the rotten wooden, wooden roof removed. And here is where the uh, 60 foot parking, 60 parking spaces of the proposed Middlesex Canal Park on the Summit Pond. The artist Dale has uh, done this fine gouache painting of the Summit Pond. He has the party boat where the company would entertain in, investors, a freight boat and a uh, passenger boat. Here he has the Thoreau brothers coming down in 1839 on their journey on the Concord and Merrimack Rivers. In the book, A Week on the Concord and Merrimack Rivers, they give a paragraph to the uh, five miles of canal they traveled between the Concord and Merrimack Rivers. One paragraph in 500 pages. So right here was the uh, anchor stone, and here was the stone crib is the anchor stone with the uh, eye bolts and rings to which the uh, chains for the towpath would be, the floating towpath were attached. Right here is the observation deck. The scaffolding was for repointing the brick, redoing the brickwork here. Yeah. The anchor stone in 1905. Over here can just be seen the stone crib at the Boston side of the uh, Summit Pond stone crib. And uh, right here is the 10 foot wide drawbridge opening for boats to and fro conquered mass. The other point on this interpretive panel is the Rogers House, built in 1807. Farmer Rogers had a daughter, Rebecca, being courted by Jabez Barton. Jed Jabez Barton was from Salem, Mass, and we think uh, the artist Dale thinks that when the family brought him the visit to uh, 
to get to know the man who, who proposed to marry Rebecca that Chavez Barton in from his second floor bedroom window. This is Dayhill's um, hypothesis. From his second floor bedroom, uh, the suitor painted the summit pawn. Here's the floating towpath. There's the passenger boat, George Washington. There's the uh, drawbridge under the hooves of the horse. And right over here is the future location of 2 Old Lamb Street. Anyway, a fine painting. So we took this building on because it's a, just a wonderful location right there where the ceremonial groundbreaking for the canal was in 1794 with uh, walkable towpaths on both sides of the summit pond and a canal lock right here. Next year, Promise by Ella will be the Middlesex Canal visitor, the new Middlesex Canal visitor in this, uh, shown in this, ren in this uh, rendering by the, the architect for Tool Lounge Street. Goodbye. Well, thank you, Jay, for taking the trouble to make this absolutely fantastic collage of uh, video material and photos. Um, this, uh, as far as I know, this Nobody concludes the live material, portion. <laughs> uh, this concludes the live portion of the event. And I, I want to say thank you, Jamie, and uh, goodbye. Thank you, Tara. Thank you, Jamie, behind the scenes. Those that attend in person, you can stick around, you can uh, mask, um, mingle. There is some water <laughs> and bread. No, <laughs> um, and the Zoom audience, in the chat, you can uh, ask questions, and uh, I hope I'll be technically savvy enough to address them uh, eventually. And um, that's it, Dyke, uh, Jamie. <laughs>